So, so uh, we are moving to Sofia. Are you in Kefalonia or in Athens? Where are you? Good evening. Good I'm evening. In are you in Athens? No, you are in Athens, Sofia. Good evening. I want to say good evening to everyone. Say that I'm honored and so happy to uh, see all this uh, effort, all this excellent work. And to meet all these excellent people. Thank you, Sophia. I'm at least touched. At least touched. <laughs> yes. Thank you, Sophia. Uh, so Sophia um, runs the Ionian Center for Culture and Arts uh, in in uh, Kefalonia, in the island of Kefalonia, uh, just outside Argostoli, Metaxata. So isn't this Metaxata? Yes, it, it is. is Metaxata. I remember correctly. And uh, we're going to watch a small video.
Σοφία, ε, την πρώτη φορά που μιλήσαμε ε, ήμουνα στην Αθήνα και έτυχε που έλεγα για το φεστιβάλ στον καλλιτεχνικό μας διευθυντή φέτος, τον Χρήστο το Δημουλά, ο οποίος ε, μου λέει δεν το πιστεύω, κάποιο κάρμα έχει γίνει τώρα, γιατί πριν να... <χω> <laughs> Πήρε εκείνη τη στιγμή εσύ τηλέφωνο και συζητάγατε για, για αυτό το project, για αυτό που έκανε, είχε καλέσει το Χρήστο να είναι συνεργάτης του Ιόνιου Κέντρου και ε, είπες θα, να συμμετέχουμε και εμείς στο φεστιβάλ, εφόσον έχει να κάνει με κουλτούρα και έχουμε εμείς τον Άπιερ που είναι Ιρλανδός στην Κεφαλονιά, δεν θα συμμετέχουμε στο φεστιβάλ και... <laughs> και έστειλες, έστειλες το, το Χρήστο στο, στο τρίτο φεστιβάλ που, που κάναμε και έτσι ξεκίνησε αυτή η συνεργασία ε, μαζί μας και τώρα, την τελευταία φορά που μιλήσαμε ε, λες Στέλλα, σας καλώ, καλώ το σχολείο σας να έρθει στην Κεφαλονιά, να κάνουμε μαζί πράγματα Πες μας βρε Σοφία, ακριβώς πώς ξεκίνησες ε, αυτό το κέντρο Ξέρω ότι ζούσε στην Αυστραλία και ότι αγαπάς, καταλαβαίνεις πάρα πολύ τι μεγάλη προσπάθεια καταβάλουν οι Έλληνες του εξωτερικού για να κρατήσουν τη γλώσσα, τον πολιτισμό κτλ. Πώς, πώς επέστρεψες στην Ελλάδα και αποφάσισες να κάνεις αυτό το κέντρο. Τι έγινε. Ε, θεωρώ ότι είμαι από τους τυχερούς ανθρώπους που είχαν την ευκαιρία να γνωρίσουν δύο εξαιρετικέ πατρίδες. Για μένα η μία ήταν η Αυστραλία και η δεύτερη η Ελλάδα. Με ίση αγάπη για τις δύο. Στην Αυστραλία λοιπόν είχα την ευκαιρία, σαν πολύ νέος άνθρωπος που πήγα 16 χρονών, να γνωρίσω ένα σύστημα πολυπολιτισμικό που σεβόταν τους πάντες. Οι Έλληνες της Αυστραλίας έχεραν τέτοια αγάπης από την κυβέρνηση, από, τις, από οτιδήποτε είχε να κάνει με την οργάνωση του κράτους, ε, είχαν τέτοια βοήθεια και όχι μόνο οι Έλληνες και όλες οι, όλα τα κράτη που έστελαν μετανάστες. Αποτέλεσμα λοιπόν μου έγινε ένα πολύ μεγάλο μάθημα εκεί που πήγα ότι μπορούμε να ζούμε όλοι με αγάπη και με σεβασμό και με συνεργασία με όλους. Έβλεπα όμως παράλληλα ότι οι Έλληνε του εξωτερικού, ειδικά της Αυστραλίας, αλλά όχι μόνο, το γνώρισα αυτό μετά και στην Αμερική και σε άλλες χώρες, ειδικά στις υπερατλαντικές χώρες, ότι οι Έλληνε που ζούσαν εκεί είχαν πάντοτε να αντιμετωπίσουν ένα μεγάλο πρόβλημα. Το πρόβλημα του να διατηρήσουν την ελληνικότητά τους, την οποία βεβαίω στην καρδιά τους την είχαν, αλλά δεν μπορούσαν να ακουμπήσουν το βάθος του ελληνικού πολιτισμού, διότι οι συνθήκες δεν βοηθούσαν. Ε, 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 να, πάρ... να, να, να τα μεταφράσω λίγο στα αγγλικά, έτσι, πολύ περιληπτικά. Ε, 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 Μήπω θέλεις να, να μιλήσω στα αγγλικά. Ε, καλά, τώρα τα είπες, οπότε θα τα το πω εγώ λίγο στα αγγλικά περιληπτικά και συνεχίζουμε. Ε, ε, Sophia was just saying that she was very lucky in her life. Because when she was 16, she moved to uh, Australia, and since she spent uh, quite a few years in Australia, and she traveled all around the world since, uh, she now lives in Greece. But she uh, felt she's very, she's been very lucky in her life because she has uh, two uh, countries: she Greece and Australia, and she loves them both the same. And um, what uh, her experience in Australia was that um, the Greeks there were very well respected by the local uh, government and uh, officials, etc. And she loved that, uh, that the name, she was a Greek and uh, the, the name Greek uh, had a, a very positive uh, way, if you want. So she. Uh, realized though that uh, after all those travels that the Greeks wanted to maintain their identity, their culture, but there are a lot of difficult circumstances and sometimes they start losing that uh, identity just because life is like that. So she decided to do something with the center. So go ahead, uh, Sophia. So when I, came, yeah. when I came back to Greece, the first thing that shocked me was that being loving Greece all my, uh, during all my absence, when I came back, I felt that 
I had not the spirit of the Greek, of the Greek country, of the Greek civilization. And I started contacting the roots of the Greek civilization in very deep level, if possible. So I started studying, I started doing a lot of work, uh, I mean, spiritual work and uh, travel, trying to have uh, as much as teachers possible in my schools and along with everyone coming in my way, I was trying to find this, the meaning of the Greek civilization. Of course, I was working as artist since when I was uh, 24 years old. And through all this path of art, I had the opportunity to meet the Greek civilization in a certain level. And I was also lucky enough to be able to leave from my job as artist. This gave me different opportunities and different ways. So I was thinking how okay. we can connect the Greek civilization with what was left out of the Greek borders. I tried to be short in this. It was my thought every day and every night that we must find a way to connect the millions of uh, Greeks out of Greece with Greece, if possible. I did a lot of work with the with the with the embassies, with the consulates around the world. But anyway, it was a small thing. But when I, I was uh, able to do it, I decided that we can, not just alone with the help of so many people, to, to establish an institution able to attract people from all over the globe. In the beginning, it was uh, my focus on Greeks uh, around the globe, but the things were uh, so good that instead of having only Greeks, we have people from all over the globe globe and this is um, even more um, uh, hopeful because we have uh, academics it was from the very first of the center that attracted people from universities starting from Roy Ashcott who started the program 2011 and and, and uh, sorry Sophia to, to to cut you shorter but we have to to move a little bit faster but I wanted to ask you so you work with universities, you work with institutions, you work, I know you work very closely with the, with the local um, town uh, hall, with the mayors, with all, any, every possible person and institution. You open your, your big hug and you include everybody, you want everybody, you want everybody to experience the Greek culture, the Greek spirit, yeah, the true. Greek... Uh, I felt it, <laughs> I don't know, but... Uh, you do it in which way? Do you do seminars, is it? You run seminars and exhibitions and is that what you do? That's what you do. And, and you, you invite people there and they stay. The institution actually has beds and people can stay and do summer schools. And is that what you do? It's not only that. The basis of this is the connections with people. One of them is okay. Mr. Christus de Moulas. Yes. He represented the center. Eternal, yes. uh, you know, love and respect. Yes. For many reasons, because I know him and he helped me in my life and with my kids' studies since 20 years ago. So, ah, yes. okay. uh, so yeah. many other people uh, came through the work. We did invite people, they were coming, but we were very honest with them, giving them the proper path to work. Right, to but what do you do their... is, sorry, Sophia, sorry to interrupt you now, but what do you do is you run all those exhibitions, seminars, uh, um, you, you do different projects and the people mm. bring in money when they can, if they can't, Again, you they are very welcome. I know that for a fact. And uh, you try to develop all those projects that encourage spirituality and the Greek spirit. Is there... Not only the Greek spirit. Now we are living right. in a fast moving world. Okay. And we see so many things good and bad to happen around the globe. So we don't have any more the right just to see the 
our little community, all the Greek state. We have global focus. We see the immigrants. We see the sacrifices. We see the destruction of countries like uh, uh, Syria, for example, not only. So okay. we see so many things running around the globe now, the COVID. So we don't have the right to ignore all these uh, important and fatal, in a way, things. Okay. So we are invited, inviting people to to see in depth the the value of life, education, and hu human uh, thinking. Not to be like uh, people not thinking and not not having any interest for anything happening on this globe. So Excellent. we're inviting people, opening to them doors, giving grants, giving our love, our uh, small knowledge. Uh, whatever we have to offer is for them. For example, today I was so touched seeing you work in Ireland, so you're all invited to come in Catalonia. <laughs> Tina, yes, you're listening. all invited. <laughs> okay, there, that's it. We're welcome. leaving. <laughs> Sophia, we're going to leave it at that. We promise with Tina that we will Good. visit you in Kefalona. Good. Good. <laughs> Thank you, Sophia. Also, Thank you so much for also joining Kefalonia, us. Also, Kefalonia feels these uh, outcomes uh, from the people coming there, and we have all the doors open. I mean, the municipality and the authorities are opening everything to the people coming for the programs. Especially from Ireland because of Napier. I keep that. Yes, of course. Of <laughs> course. Of course. Sophia, I have to, start, I have to cut uh, the interview here. We'll chat more. Uh, Tina, you heard. Uh, so thank you so much, Sophia. Please keep the invitation. <laughs> we will. For all. For yeah. all. Okay. Thank you. Have a good evening.